my dear friends and welcome back to Homemaking Without Fear. My name is Cassie. I'm the creator of the blog and YouTube channel homemakingwithoutfear.com and Homemaking Without Fear. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different. Uh, it's a DIY project that I've been working on for a few weeks. I have put together a substantial DIY home first aid kit. A lot of the supplies in here I've had but I went ahead and linked everything for you that I possibly could. If there is something that you would like to add to your kit, you can do that easily. So head over to the blog post. I also have an instant download printable labels for you over there as well. So lots of good stuff. Go ahead and check that out. Today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the importance of having a home first aid kit. lots of different ways to put together a home first aid kit. Um, everything I'm going to show you today are things that I prefer to have, but certainly every home first aid kit will look a little bit different. Feel free to delete and add anything that you would like. The thing that got me going on my kit was finding this awesome fishing tackle box that I could use for my complete storage system. The idea for this I got from um, Now That I'm a Mother, YouTube channel. She did a home first aid kit using this box and I loved it. I've used tackle boxes for years, but just the smaller ones and I've had them all over the place. Um, I keep them in the camper in the house and and when I need something, it's actually kind of hard to find it because I got to go to all these different places. So what I did is I consolidated everything, put together a substantial kit so we have everything that we need. Now a well stocked home First aid kit is such an important thing to have. If conventional Western medicines are not your thing, you can certainly stock your kit with more herbal, natural products, ointments, things like that. So as a mother and also as a nurse, I tend to fall somewhere in the middle. I appreciate conventional medicine. Try not to use it unless we have to. Ibuprofen, Tylenol, certainly antibiotics. I am grateful and thankful to have these things, but it's not our first choice. I will always try to do essential oils, herbs, natural products, homeopathic medications first before I dive into conventional medicine. But I have seen the benefits of having certain things on hand, and so I choose to keep both in my first aid kit. Now, it's both my medical training, but also my personality to just be more prepared. I'm just kind of of that mindset that I prepare for the worst, hope for the best. Now, a quick word on being prepared or prepping. Prepping kind of has a negative connotation to it. I don't really like using that word because it kind of implies stockpiling and hoarding things. I don't believe we should ever prepare our homes out of fear of what's going on in society, of that kind of thing. But I do think it's important to prepare out of just good wisdom. And I believe God calls us to be prepared. He equips us with skills, knowledge, tools that we need to be prepared. And so I think it's really important to prepare our homes out of wisdom and not out of fear. So I just want to make that clear. Proverbs 3.15 says, Wisdom is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. And preparing our homes with a first aid kit to handle accidents or minor emergencies is really important. There's nothing worse than being in a situation and feeling like you don't have what you need, you don't know what to do, you can't help. That's a terrible feeling. So I have really racked my brain to think of lots of different scenarios and things that we might run into. Over on the blog, I have some thought-provoking questions for you to help you figure out exactly what you might need. Um, it's important to think about what kinds of accidents or emergencies are you most likely to be exposed to? What is the current health of your family? Do you have pre-existing conditions, chronic conditions or illness? Do you have any severe allergies that you need to be pre prepared for? Um, how fast are you able to access medical attention? For example, 
we are an hour away from a small hospital, we're over two hours away from larger hospitals, it would take over 30 minutes for an ambulance to get to us here where we live. So it's really important for me to have some basic emergency first aid supplies on hand so that I can take care of a few things myself, improve outcomes. We also want to avoid unnecessary doctor's visits if at all possible. It's expensive and emergency rooms, hospitals, doctor's offices, are really busy right now. So it's important if there's something small, um, something that we can take care of at home, we wanna try to do that as best we can and free up those resources for people who really need them. If you're a family that does not live rurally, maybe you don't adventure or recreate or hunt or fish or work outdoors very much, maybe you're very healthy, you may not need a very extensive first aid kit. But if you are an active family, if you do recreate, if you do live in rural places, if you do have some pre-existing illness or conditions in your family, this is even more important to prepare. A few medical scenarios that I wanted to prepare my kit for are um, a cardiac or respiratory arrest that's, that would require CPR, hemorrhaging, minor or major bleeding, poisoning, um, any cuts, scrapes, lacerations, burns, abrasions. This happens all the time in our family. Um, fracture care, so we wanna be able to maybe stabilize an injury. Allergic reactions are really important to prepare for. Nausea and vomiting, diarrhea and constipation, cold cough and flu, skin infection or inflammation, and pain. These are all things that I wanted to prepare my kit for. No matter what situations you think you might face, having a first aid kit and not knowing what to do in a situation or not knowing how to use the things won't help you. My most important piece of advice in all of this is make sure that you have proper training in first aid and CPR. If you're a mom, if you're a babysitter, if you spend any time with children at all, please make sure that you get yourself into a CPR course an infant child CPR course especially. And a lot of these courses are offered online. In my blog post, I have resources for you through um, American Red Cross, American Heart Association, and the National CPR Foundation. So please, if you get nothing else from this video, please make sure that you invest in a training opportunity for CPR and first aid. Let's jump into my DIY home first aid kit and I'll show you how I put it together and the things that are inside. First off, this Plano tackle box has amazing storage capacity. Top compartment that is easy access, so I went ahead and put things in here that I would use all the time or things that I would want to get to pretty quickly in this very top compartment. Let me show you what I have in here. I have wound seal, so this is a powder that stops bleeding for minor cuts or injuries. I have some safety pins. I have tongue depressors, a Sharpie marker, a Sharpie pen. I have a small screwdriver and magnifying glass. I just had this, so I threw it in there. I have some tweezers, fingernail clippers, and a bottle of 81 milligram chewable aspirin. I want to have this readily accessible if there's any concern with a heart issue or a heart attack happening in my home. I want to give this right away before I call an ambulance. So these are all things that I would use a lot or need fairly quickly. I love this case because it has a larger top bin, but also smaller individualized trays. There's four of these trays down below. So I just love the organizational options here. In the top of my kit, I have organized items by using these reusable plastic bags. And again, I've linked these in my post. I'm gonna start with the lid. I have taped a adult and infant child CPR mask right in the top for easy access. I have a tactical tourniquet and also a larger blood stop package coming as well. So there'll be a blood stop package, a tourniquet, a CPR mask, and then I'll secure this Coban to the lid as well that I could use for just a pressure dressing. So hemorrhage, cardiac arrest, CPR, I have all of that in the top of my box. 
Now, in the main compartment, I have gloves. I still need a label for that. I have liquid IV, which I love products that come in little tubes. I think I got these at Costco, but I love the liquid IV. It tastes kind of like Tang if you grew up in the 90s, like I did. So it tastes good, but it also, it really is great for hydration. I have thermometers and extra covers, a couple different kinds, finger splints, cotton balls, and towelettes. I have these small expandable towelettes, so I toss those in here. I have trauma shears, a multi-tool, and a small sewing kit in, th in this Ziploc. I have hot packs in this one. These are smaller, ready-to-use hot packs. These are really cool because you just pop the little inner piece and it actually creates a chemical reaction inside instantly that causes this pack to get warm. You just reset it by putting it in boiling water wrapped in a towel and it will, it will reset and you can reuse this. So I have four of those in there. I have a reusable ice pack, extra batteries for th thermometers, I have an otoscope, I have a pulse oximeter, so extra batteries are important. I had this, so I threw it in there. It's just um, a bulb syringe or a nasal aspirator. It's just good for sucking out boogers. I have a, a SAM splint or a reusable splint. This is bendable, flexible. This is great for stab stabilizing any kind of fractures. I have some tools in the top of my box here, and depending on your training or your level of comfort with this, you may or may not have these items, and that's okay. Remember, your kit will be customized to your family's needs. I do keep an otoscope on hand, which is, if you're not familiar, familiar, it's a scope for looking in the ear. This has come in so handy for me to be able to check my kids' ears, look at their eardrums, and again, if you don't know what you're looking at or don't know how to use it, this wouldn't be helpful to you, but I prefer to have one in my kit. I just got it off Amazon. I have an automated blood pressure cuff. I have a pulse oximeter for checking oxygen levels. It just clips on a finger or on a toe. I have a stethoscope. And then I also have, in the bottom of my box, a suture set. Now, most of you will not be comfortable or, or be needing to suture a laceration or anything like that. And honestly, it wouldn't be my first choice of thing to do either, but I have had to do it before. I do know the basics about wound closure and when they should and shouldn't. And if we were in a backcountry situation, camping, hiking, or if we were home and we couldn't get to the hospital, I would definitely consider doing it myself. That is something you may not put in your kit and that's okay. Now for these trays down below, I've went ahead and split our supplies into four different categories. Um, this may be different depending on what you like to keep on hand, but I chose to go with stomach and pain. So this would cover nausea, vomiting. This would, this would be my box of supplies for constipation, diarrhea, and then also managing general pain. And I'll go through each box with you. Um, I have a wound care box because around here that happens all the time. I have a cold cough and allergy box. And then I have an ointment, salves, and essential oils box. Now I have a separate essential oil kit that's in a smaller tackle box. So I'll pull that out when I'm going to make something with essential oils. I just have my go-to roller bottles in this kit because this will be um, more accessible to me than my regular essential oils box. And it's more organized right now. All right, my ointment, salves, and oils. You'll see that I've labeled the outside of these boxes with what is in each compartment. This is great because it allows you to quickly see what's inside and also note if something is missing and you need to refill it, replace it, order something new. All right, so I have some oral ointments. I have Oragel. Um, my family gets cold sores, so I have 
cold sore cream on hand. Um, my daughter also gets um, canker sores, so we keep that on hand. A lot of times we'll use peppermint essential oil for those kinds of things, but I also have lysine and oral gel in this container. I have a um, Silvadine cream for burns. I have a aloe vera burn spray. Some of these more natural items I do get from Azure Standard, so I will go ahead and link those in my blog post. So check the video description to get to the blog post so you can get all of these links. I have a homeopathic insect spray, eye wash with an eye wash cup. I have a drawing salve. Now this would be for um, anything that is under the stuck under the skin, so a splinter. It's homeopathic and made from arnica. I love arnica. I have antifungal creams here. I have my colloidal silver uh, spray. Colloidal silver is phenomenal for wound care. You can. This is designed to take internally um, for antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, that kind of thing, but I do use it topically as well. I have some bacitracin and then another antimicrobial, antibacterial ointment. I have some eye drops as well. So I have a, quite a few different eye drops. Um, most of these are prescription, but having some visine and some lubricating eye drops on hand would be a good idea. Now, I have all my doTERRA roller bottles, not all of them, but a lot of them I use frequently in here. If you're in the market for some good quality oils, go ahead and check the link in the video description and I'll share my doTERRA shopping link with you. But I have tea tree for topical skin ailments, so it's a great antibacterial. I have lavender, also great for skin, calming the skin. Oregano is a wonderful antibacterial. On guard for an immune boost. Um, you can roll it on the bottoms of feet. Peppermint for cold sores and headaches. Breathe is a doTERRA blend for calming the respiratory system, promoting more relaxed breathing, helping to loosen mucus. Frankincense is a phenomenal oil. It's a little bit on the expensive side. Great for balancing mood, skin imperfections. Rescuer is more of a muscle blend meant for muscle relaxation and reducing muscle tension. If you have any questions about essential oils, go ahead and email me at cassie at homemakingwithoutfear.com and I'd be happy to talk oils with you. In my cold cough allergy box, I have hydrocortisone cream and also a Benadryl cream. Again, our first go-to for skin calming would be essential oils or homeopathics, but I feel like this is really important to have on hand. I have, chil I have children's chewable Benadryl. I have liquid Benadryl. I have adult Benadryl capsules. Sudafed, decongestant, Mucinex, uh, Mucinex cough. This is the, a powder tube, and I love having these on hand. Um, I have some homeopathics here, stuffy nose and sinus, Highland stuffy nose and sinus, Highland sniffles and sneezes, and then I have Ossicillicinum. <laughs> I don't know I'm not saying that right, but this is great to have on hand for cold and flu season. Also homeopathic, I have homeopathic allergy. Um, now, also for allergy, I keep Zantac and Zyrtec on hand. So Z and Z, Zantac and Zyrtec, those are both histamine blockers. Zantac can be a stomach um, antacid, but it's also a antihistamine. So I keep that on hand for allergic reactions that don't respond to Benadryl. So hives and recurrent allergic reaction. Throat drops, cough drops. I have some nasal sprays, saline. I tend to have a lot of sinus issues and allergy stuff, so does my son. We like this steroid nasal spray when we get really flared up. This is generic Flonase from Costco. I have an epinephrine inhaler for asthma attacks. None of us are asthmatics. My husband has had that in the past. 
So I do like to keep this on hand. And then I have an albuterol inhaler that would also be in the case of a sudden shortness of breath for an allergic reason or um, an asthma situation. Now, <clears throat> an EpiPen would be a great thing to keep in this kit. Uh, they're hard to get hold of. My family doesn't have anaphylactic allergy that we know of, so it's hard to get one. But having one on hand when you live far away from medical attention would be a really good idea. This is not everything I have for wound care. I do have a bulk tote that I keep extra wound care supplies in that I restock this box from. Now, wound care can get pretty bulky, so I just have the essentials here, but I have large bottles of peroxide, large bottles of um, alcohol, and extra bandages in a separate box with also some bulk medications because it's cheaper to buy in bulk. So I will check that box and refill these from there first before I purchase anything new. But what's in here is some roll gauze, tube gauze, mole skin, which is great for bliss covering a blister or a scratch to protect it. I have Steri strips, which are sort of like butterfly bandages um, to help close a cut work a lot better than butterfly bandages so they're called Steri strips and I have a couple different sizes of these. I have a bottle of new skin. Also have some single use uh, super glue. Super glue works great and just the regular scotch super glue I find works the best. I have a saline um, spray for wound irrigation. This is designed as a nasal mist but I really like this saline on hand to irrigate wounds. I have a couple different types of tape, paper tape and transparent tape. Also electrical tape, duct tape too, but electrical tape is phenomenal for um, adding a little extra support to a bandage. <laughs> it's waterproof, it sticks really well. Uh, electrical tape is great to have on hand. I have an ace wrap. Oh, I have some extra um, two by two gauze pads below the tape. I have an ace wrap. I would use this for a sprain or a strain or to wrap around that splint that I showed you, help stabilize a fracture. I have Coban or vet wrap for bandages or wound dressings. I have a few alcohol pads and then I have just assorted band-aids. Again, we have a lot more band-aids in our larger wound tote. Last box here. This I chose to label stomach and pain. In here I have a couple different types of stool softeners, laxatives. I have Colace, Senecott. Um, again, our go-to would be herbal, so something like a smooth move tea or a prune juice or something like that um, would be a, my first preference, but I want to have these on hand. I have prescription anti-nausea medication from when I was pregnant. So I keep that on hand. I have Imodium, anti-diarrheal. I have some antacids or Tums. I have a couple different types of motion sickness medications that is uh, for upset tummies. Uh, my daughter gets motion sick, so I keep those on hand just in case. I have an enema. I have glycerin suppositories. I have um, a couple homeopathic pain medication, so chamomile calming tablets and also Arnica for bruising, muscle soreness, stiffness. So these are all natural pain relievers. Children's Tylenol and Ibuprofen. Infant Tylenol and Ibuprofen. Under here, I also have Ibuprofen and Tylenol dosing charts. And I have this link to my post too. I highly recommend keeping this on hand in your box. Um, it gives you weight-based dosing for the concentrated drops, liquids, chewables, for everything. So I have these linked to my blog post. I would recommend printing these out and keeping it in your box so that you can make sure, extra sure that you're giving the appropriate dose. Keep in mind that Motrin is the brand name for ibuprofen. Tylenol is just a brand name for acetaminophen. So they're the same 
thing. Tylenol, acetaminophen, Motrin, ibuprofen, those are the same thing. Um, when I was doing nurse triage calls, I would get that question a lot, um, and people would be confused about that. The infant drops are more concentrated, so you can give less volume to an infant. So an infant won't have to take a big syringe full of medicine, they just have to take a little bit. So keep that in mind, there's different concentrations, and there's specific dosing syringes, oral syringes for each. So I keep those in here as well. And then lastly, I have a bottle of adult Tylenol and adult ibuprofen. All right, I hope that was helpful to take a little look into what I keep on hand in our family medicine kit or our first aid kit. I really tried to plan for the most common medical situations or minor emergency that we might face. If you guys can think of anything else or if you have any suggestions of what I might add, drop a comment below. Feel free to email me if you have any questions about this. Um, and again, your box will probably look different than mine and that's okay. If you don't agree with certain things that I put in here, that's okay. Just delete it, add what you prefer. Again, at, at homemakingwithoutfear.com, you will find the blog post where you can get these labels. Um, I recommend keeping emergency contact information readily available on the front of your box. I have our physical address, 911 for emergency, some emergency contacts like the sheriff's office, our pediatrician, our local hospital, our nurse first triage line, also our family phone numbers. Um, oh, poison control is a really important number to have on hand as well for accidental ingestion of all kinds of things, um, things, cleaning supplies, medications, anything that might have been accidentally ingested, call this number first. They have all the resources to give you instructions on what to do. Now, this is our regional poison control number, but I have a link in my blog post to help you figure out what your poison control phone number is. Definitely keep that on hand for accidental poisoning and call them first before you go to the emergency room, before you go anywhere, make this call. It's really quick, it's really fast. What they will do is they will call ahead to the hospital or the emergency room if that's where they directed you to go. They will fill the medical worker in on what happened and give them the protocol to treat it. So we, so hospitals and emergency rooms don't keep all poison protocols on hand, or this institution does. Make the call. If you get to the emergency room and forget, we will call for you. But make the call even if you're headed out the door make this call. A lot of my natural homeopathic um, supplies are from Azure Standard. I picked up activated charcoal. Activated charcoal is something that might be used in the case of a poisoning or accidental ingestion of something. So a bleach or Tylenol, that kind of thing. I would not use this unless I was directed to do so by poison control. This is also something you would have to mix in a liquid and have the person drink it. And what happens is the charcoal binds to the toxin and prevents the person from getting really sick from it. This is a quite a large bag. I haven't decided exactly how to put it in here because you don't want activated charcoal to be exposed to any kind of moisture or it'll cake. I will think I will put a little bit in a small airtight waterproof container of some sort and put um, and put some dosing instructions on the outside just for me. Now, I, I am not here to give you medical advice. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm simply showing you what I do and have on hand because in our lifestyle, our location, we have a pretty significant risk of something happening and also have a significant risk of not getting to medical attention quickly. So I choose to have on hand more than perhaps you would, um, but I knew I would get questions about the activated charcoal. So yes, I'm still putting it in my kit. It's just a really large container to put in here. I'm gonna keep it in the Mylar bag, but find um, a smaller container to put just a little bit with dosing instructions. And again, I would not do that unless I was instructed to by poison control. All right, well, thank you for joining me on this rainy day. I hope the lighting wasn't too bad. I've been off schedule this week because I came down with a nasty case of mastitis and I've been fighting a lot of discomfort and fever and body aches, but I'm doing a lot better today. 
Um, so I will be back on a regular schedule next week for sure. Incidentally, I used a lot of things in my med kit. I used my heat packs. I used my um, tea tree essential oil to rub in the infected location. Lots of ibuprofen. Um, I did end up having to take antibiotics, which I don't prefer, but it is what it is. I'm thankful to have it if necessary. So you guys, if you have not subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to do so. It really helps my channel grow. Please share this video with anybody that could find it helpful. I love sharing practical homemaking DIY projects, as well as ideas for natural living, home decor, and lots of yummy recipes. Hit that subscribe button, turn on your bell notification. Let's get together next week.